Every year, pneumonia kills close to a million children under the age of five. Malaria Consortium has been conducting a research project to identify the most accurate and acceptable pulse oximeters and respiratory rate timers for improved detection of pneumonia symptoms in children by community health workers and first level health facility workers. This project is unique in that it's the first study that uses robust evaluation methods in a rigorous clinical trial design to evaluate the accuracy of new devices that has never been tested before, but that has great potential in improving the accuracy of a pneumonia diagnosis, in particular at community level where most cases occur. The Pneumonia Diagnostics Project is being conducted in four countries, Cambodia, Ethiopia, South Sudan and Uganda. These countries were selected based on the number of pneumonia deaths in each of the countries, as well as the availability of uh, community level diagnosis and treatment. To evaluate these new devices, the project is comprised of three distinct phases overseen by a scientific advisory committee. We worked with a consultant um, to document the possible 200 devices um, that we could use to detect the signs and symptoms of pneumonia. And once we had documented the 200 devices, then we um, wanted to work out a process to score and rank um, these 200 devices to get to a number that we could take into the field for the accuracy evaluation. Um, to do that, um, we developed a scoring and ranking system based on device attributes through formative research. So we use formative research, focus group discussions and pile sorting to, um, to define 20 device attributes that we then used um, to score the 200 devices. The um, device scoring process, um, we defined 12 devices um, that were suitable to be taken forward to the laboratory testing. In doing the laboratory testing, we had two objectives. The first was to um, test the devices and see if they were fit for purpose, if they would survive in the field conditions in the four countries that we were doing the accuracy evaluation in. The second um, objective of the laboratory testing was to test particularly the pulse oximeters for accuracy. And we went through a very rigorous accuracy evaluation where we tested using simulators um, each of the pulse oximeters at various oxygen saturation levels. As a result of the laboratory testing, um, we decided um, to take nine devices forward to the accuracy evaluation in the field. Malaria Consortium conducted a protocol design workshop to prepare for the accuracy evaluation in order to standardize the protocol and operating procedures between the project countries. This workshop brought together the different project teams to discuss and define the design and implementation of the research in the different country locations. The protocol design workshop was followed by training of the master trainers, who through a cascade approach would train the selected community health workers and first level health facility workers. For the pneumonia diagnostics project training, we've done two training sessions of master trainers. The first was for the accuracy evaluation phase. What was uh, most interesting about that is that that's the first time in Malaria Consortium's history where we've actually brought trainers from three countries together and train them all together in one room. We also um, have a group in Cambodia and we train them individually uh, in their host countries. Master trainers are uh, often doctors who are working within the hospitals or health facilities that um, we are implementing the study or they're nurses or clinical officers. In some cases they've been our project uh, research team. And uh, so we brought the groups, there's uh, three trainers per country. We gave them training on uh, how to use the devices. Uh, we provided them with job aids uh, that were translated for their countries. We trained them on pneumonia and then they were able to practice uh, conducting the trainings. We also provided them with adult learning skills. And then after that, each group went back to their host country 
and had to do a pilot training. And then they were observed in their pilot training to see how well they performed. I'm a, a master trainer. Those, those who are people trained in Uganda, we are three. We are trained to train the assessors, the community health workers who will be uh, assessing or using the diagnostic tools. We were three countries being trained, each one of them with three master trainers. It was very good, it was very interactive, it was very great that we shared experiences with the people from other countries. The accuracy evaluation element of the study was focused on um, measuring the accuracy of the nine devices in the hands of community health workers and first level health facility workers in the four countries selected for the study. The devices were assessed in comparison to a number of reference standards that had previously been agreed and defined by the Scientific Advisory Committee. Well, the process is such that the children with their caregivers would present at the hospital and then after being registered, the hospital staff then referred them to our research nurse who was responsible for the screening and consenting of the caregivers. The assessors um, conducted assessments using either two or three devices and took two readings for each device. And then our research assistants at the time were observing the assessments. They completed checklists um, to ensure that they were using the devices correctly. So for example, did the community health worker turn on the device correctly? Did they attach the probe to the child correctly? And then after the assessor completed their assessments using either two or three devices, depending on the device set, um, we had um, an expert counter come in who also used those same devices. So in this stage of the trial, we actually had um, three reference standards. We had the, our gold standard, the Massimo Radical 7 machine. Um, in the case of the respiratory rate timers or apps, we had the expert counter. And then we also um, videotaped um, some of the respiratory rate assessments. The data provided by Nachijova Jen and other health workers during the accuracy evaluation was then collected and cleaned by the project teams. All data was subsequently double-entered by two individuals into EpiData and validated before statistical analysis. The data from the accuracy evaluation, in addition to exit interviews with the health workers, informed the final devices selected for the field evaluation. The field testing was focused on the feasibility of using these devices in routine practice at the community level. In using all the devices that we used in the accuracy evaluation in the field evaluation, this allowed us to maximize the data that we collected on the devices and build a better understanding of their usability and acceptability at the community level. Once again, prior to commencing the field evaluation, Malaria Consortium conducted a protocol design workshop and conducted further training with the master trainers in order to prepare for the next phase. So um, one of the things uh, that we've done, and particularly it's more important with this evaluation phase, is that we developed competency checklists for us to evaluate the assessors who are going to be using these devices. We use in the first phase, but it's going to be more uh, stringent for the evaluation phase because we're giving these assessors to take these uh, uh, devices to their homes for three months to use. So we have to feel confident that they know how to use them. So 
So any child presenting to the community health worker in their home, um, if they meet the eligibility criteria, they'll be invited to participate. Um, now the community health worker will follow just their routine, you know, process according to the integrated community case management guidelines. But they'll collect respiratory rate reading using our respiratory rate timer and then should the child have fast breathing, um, they will also use the pulse oximeter device. So for the field evaluation, each accessor will be given one respiratory rate timer and one pulse oximeter devices. And then another component of the field evaluation is that our research team, our research assistants, will visit each of our assessors on a monthly basis um, to, again, observe the assessments. They'll actually also be videotaping all the assessments and then collecting additional information, including interviews with both the community health workers as well as the caregivers. And because the, these structured assessments, as we're referring to them, will be conducted once a month over the course of three months that will allow us to evaluate whether their perceptions have changed, perceptions surrounding you know, device um, accuracy, device durability, whether the caregivers are more apt to trust, you know, to see the community health worker's diagnosis because they have this device. But, uh, ដោយសុខភាពដែលមានអាយុប្រណីតហ្នឹងគឺគាត់ <coughs> From Tokyo, I actually go to Japan. Tom Pemilia. This study has shown that community health workers do need better diagnostic tools for pneumonia and are capable of using them accurately. Once the field testing is completed and we have conducted the final set of focus group discussions with um, the assessors, we will compile a final report and present that to the scientific advisory committee who will make recommendations on the best devices to use at the community level and also for future next steps. One of the other important outputs of the project is that we have created and validated a protocol for testing not just the accuracy but also the usability of diagnostic tools at the community level. And this can be used in many other contexts and situations in the future.